So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be continuing with the theme of going through some big mark questions taken from some higher GCSE Maths papers. Now, as always there'll be a copy of the questions as a link in the description below for you to have a attempt at before watching through this video as we go through the answers. Now before we get started working through these questions I strongly recommend that you do have an attempt at these questions just to see what your prior knowledge is. Now if you're looking at these topics and having no clue what they are then before attempting these questions I would strongly revise reviewing and revising these topics in which there are plenty of guidance whether you've covered it in your own exercise book that you've covered in class at school or you've got a revision guide but I'll also include my contents page link which will go through each of these particular topics in a lot more greater detail if you are unsure about how to get started on these questions. So looking at this first question it says that the length of a rectangle is six times the width and here you can see that we've got our rectangle and we've got one length which is 6x and the width which is x and it says two of the rectangles are joined uh, together with no overlap to make this L shape and it says that the perimeter of the L shape is 98.8 centimeters and the question is asking us to work out the perimeter of one of the rectangles so in other words we want to work out the perimeter of this rectangle here now before we do that what we need to do is we need to use what well, we need to find the perimeter of the big shape as we know the actual length of it so using the diagram at the top we can see that this length here is going to be x this full length is going to be 6x this length here is going to be 6x take away x which is 5x this length here is going to be x this is going to be 6x this is going to be x and this length is going to be 6x so then if I then work out the perimeter of all of those and adding up all the x's I'm going to get 26x equals 98.8 so from this I can then divide both sides by 26 in which then I get the value of x which in this case is going to be 3.8 centimeters and then using this information I can then work out what the perimeter of this rectangle is going to be so here the perimeter of the rectangle is going to equal well 6x plus x plus 6x plus x is going to give me 14x and 14x is going to be 14 times x which is 3.8 which if I type that in or work it out gives me an answer of 53.2 centimeters now moving on to our next question it says the nth terms of two linear sequence a and b are added together to give the nth term of a new sequence the new sequence starts 8 13 18 23 and the nth term of sequence a is n plus 1 work out the nth term of sequence b well the first part we need to do for this is first of all we need to work out what sequence a actually is so sequence a is n plus 1 so if i set up my table i've got n 1 2 3 Four. then the nth term now don't worry about in terms of this I should call it am so let's just call that get rid of that t and stick am is going to be into substituting the n values into this sequence here I'm going to end up with 2 3 4 and 5 now in terms of this we then what with the questions asking is well we know that a plus b in terms of the nth term is going to be these four numbers here so 8, 13, 18, and 23. Now it says that A plus B gives you these numbers that I've written in blue. So what we then need to do, we can then work out what sequence B is going to be. So here all I need to do is just take away those two values. So the blue one from the, oh sorry, the purple one from the blue one. So that's going to give me 6, that's going to give me 10, that's going to give me 14, and that's going to give me 18. So it's this that I need to then work out the nth term of. So here you can see that the difference is going up in plus 4. So then 4n is going to be in the formula. And if I just write 4n, what do I need to do to get from 4 to 6? Well, I need to add 2. So the nth term of sequence b is going to be 4n plus 2. Moving on to our next question, it says that trapezium DEFG is formed by joining triangle DEH to rectangle EFGH. And it says ABC is similar to DEH, work out the area of DEFG. So what we want to do is work out the area of this trapezium. So first things first, what I need to do is I need to work out what BC is. So if I just write number one, 
in terms of the steps is find b c now how do i do that well i'm going to use pythagoras to work this out so if i just call this x now i can see that a b is the longer side so x squared plus 4.2 squared equals 7 squared so then x squared equals and it's going to be uh, let me just quickly work that out on the calculator it's going to be 49 minus 4.2 squared and if i just type that into my calculator I get an answer of two point oh no don't um try entering that in again. I get an answer of thirty one point three six. So x is going to equal the square root of that, which is five point six. So this length here is five point six. Now from this, what I can then do, see then is to work out the scale factor. So what I need to do is find a common length. So I'm going to use this length here and this length here. So here the scale factor is going to be 6 over 4.2. And again, if I simplify, that's going to give me 10 over 7 on the calculator, which is going to give me an, a nasty decimal number, so I'm going to leave it as 10 over 7. And then the third step, what I then need to do is to find e to h or f to g, whichever you prefer to call it. And I can do that by using the scale factor. So if I know to get from this triangle to this triangle, I need to multiply by 10 over 7. So then to find e h, that's going to be... 5.6 multiplied by the scale factor which is 10 over 7 and that's going to give me an answer of and just type that in of 8 so that means that this length here is going to be 8 this length here is going to be 8 this length here is going to be 7.5 now from this what I can now do is then find the area of uh, what we're calling it D E F G which is a trapezium so my two parallel sides are this length here and this total length here so it's going to be 7.5 plus and then 6 plus 7.5 is going to be 13.5 multiplied by the height which is 8 all divided by 2 and if I type that all into my calculator I'm going to get an answer of 84 centimeter square Moving on to our next question, let me just zoom in so we can see it a bit clearer on the screen. And of course, it's going to reset, so let's just scroll back down there. So it says that Fred bought an apartment for £137,500. He made 8% profit when he sold the apartment. He used all the profit to pay 40% of the deposit on the house. The deposit was one sixth of the price of the house. Work out the price of the house. So there's quite a lot of information there that we need to know in order to work out the answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to work out what the sale price of the apartment was. So the sale price of the apartment is going to be. Now to do that, what I need to do is, well, he's made 8% profit. So I need to multiply 1, 3, 7500 zero, zero, multiplied by 1.08 and that comes up to a value of 148,500. Now from this what I can then do is work out the profit amount. So the profit amount which is going to be 13 oh no other way around it's going to be the sell price which is 148500 zero, zero, minus the price that he bought it and that comes up to a total of eleven thousand pounds so that's the profit it then says he uses all of his profit to pay 40 percent of the house so basically what we know is that 40 percent equals eleven thousand so what we then need to do is work out what a hundred thousand is so a hundred percent not 100,000, sorry, 100%. And so if 40% is 11,000, then all I need to do is do 11,000 
divided by 40, which gives me what 1% is, multiplied by 100, and that comes up to a total of 27500. So this is his deposit amount. So then, let me just write where I've got 27,000 from. So that's his deposit. So this is the deposit. And next that we know that the deposit was one sixth of the price of the house. So therefore, if I just move this down a little bit, we can then see, so one sixth equals 27,500. So six sixths are gonna be six lots of 27,500, which comes up to a total of 165 thousand pounds and there we go moving on to question 17 it says that a vending machine has a different item in each section it sells seven drinks three of which is a juice five snacks two of which are fruit bars and 11 meals four of which are salads one drink one snack one meal are chosen at random show that the probability of getting a juice a fruit bar and a salad is more than five percent so for here, what we need to do is we want to first of all work out what the total number of combos are. Now to do that, what we need to do is multiply these numbers together. So it's going to be 7 times 5 times 11, which gives me an answer of 385. The next thing I then need to do is work out the combinations of the juice, fruit bars and salads. So the juice, fruit bars, salad combos. Is going to be 3 times 2 times 4 which is 24 and the next thing I then need to do is work out the probability so the probability of a juice and a fruit bar and a salad is going to be 24 over 385 so then if I convert that into a decimal that's going to give me 0 0.062 and as you can see, comparing 5%, which has a decimal is 0 0.05. So there, 0 0.062 is greater than 0 0.05. So there we have showed that the probability of getting a juice, fruit bar and salad is more than 5%. Then moving on to question 18, it says that f of x equals 3x plus 9 over 5 and g of x equals 6x minus 1. And the question is asking us to show that g f of 2 is an integer. So for this, we could do this a number of ways. What we could do is substitute 2 into f, work it out, then substitute the answer into g, which we can then work it out and show that the answer is 17. And I'll probably say that's probably the easiest way. Another way is you actually working out what g of f of x is and then substituting 2 into that. So we'll kind of do both ways. So if I just have method 1, so if I then substitute find f of 2, so that's going to be 3 times 2 plus 9 divided by 5. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 9 is 15 divided by 5 is 3. And then I'm going to substitute 3 into g. Oh, let me get rid of that x. 3 into g in which I'm going to get 6 times 3 take away 1. 6 times 3 is 18 take away 1 equals 17. And there I've got the answer. Another way of doing it is working out what g of f is. So g f of x. So again, what I'm doing is I'm going to substitute f of x into g. So f of x is this, and I've got g of x of this. So then substituting that, I'm going to have 6 lots, and then I'm going to have 3x plus 9 over 5 take away 1. And then if I, so that's what g of x is, not simplified. So then if I then substitute 2 into that, I get 6 lots of 6 plus 9 over 5, take away 1. 6 plus 9 is 15, divided by 5 is 3, in which I get the same answer of 17. So again, either which way you want to do it, it's up to you. But again, when you've already got the value, sometimes it's best just to substitute it into one function, then substitute the answer into the second one, like I've showed in blue. For question B, it then says, show that the inverse function of 8 is not an integer. So the first thing we need to do here is to find the inverse function of f. Now we know that f of x is equal to 3x plus 9 over 5. 
So again, following the steps, we make it equal to y. And then we want to make y the subject. So we've got 5y equals 3x plus 9. We're running out of space, so we've got 5y minus 9 equals 3x. So 5y minus 9 over 3 equals x. So from this, we know that the inverse function of x equals 5x minus 9 over 3. We'll just put a little bubble around that. So all that's left for me to then do is substitute 8 into this. So here I've got the inverse function of 8. Well, that's going to be 5 times 8 minus 9 divided by 3. 5 times 8 is 40. Take away 9 is 31. So it's 31 over 3, which is not an integer. And there we go.